I'm working again with circles in the sand and drawing a, a smaller labyrinth for me. <laughs> and uh, I, I brought some modified flashlights and we're gonna be doing another nighttime labyrinth walk. This is my third time doing it. And every, every time I do it, I learn something new. The first time I wasn't sure what to expect. And even though the flashlight was a little bit bright, uh, it kind of burned the sand. You can't really see the highlights or the detail in the sand, but the purple light and the glow, it, it looked really cool. The second time we did three walks and I could tell a big difference based on the brightness of the flashlight. And I learned a lot about these two experiments. I'm also gonna try to do like a time lapse. So there's a lot happening in this video. <laughs> uh, stay tuned, I think it's gonna be really cool. I got uh, the team of Circles in the Sand came back today for me to draw a, a large Baltic wheel. And then a couple of volunteers are gonna stay and help me do flashlights and, and lanterns and things like that. So it's gonna be really awesome. For this, uh, this time I brought some modified flashlights and I'll show you here real quick. What I did was I just took some 16 ounce cups and then I used my favorite photography tool, which is the Gorilla Tape and I blacked them out so you're not gonna see any glow. This will let me see the sand without uh, a glowing light or where that light is coming from. So it's not gonna be any distracting elements, hopefully only the bright, color and the and the labyrinth it's a cloudy day so i'm thinking we're gonna get some glow from the city lights and there's some houses and stuff over here so that should i'll show you and then over there behind me there's some lights so that should cast light towards the labyrinth and towards the beach and it's gonna bounce off the clouds and give me a nice detail there's no moon today it's a moonless night and the clouds are gonna block the light anyway so it doesn't matter uh it should be done here in about a about an hour and then I'll go and set up and, and try to compose and then come back down the beach with the flashlights and things and, uh, and see what happens. So again, a big thank you to Circles in the Sand. They're a great group of people. They love having fun and, and create beautiful things. Uh, I'm hoping that one of these pictures will make it to the calendar, but we'll see. Hopefully it'll turn out okay. All right, that's it for now. I'm gonna go film them raking and stuff and then I'll see you back after dark. here again. Yeah. Okay, this one is set. I got two cameras up here in the cliff, one on the other side and one at the base. And we're doing a, a slow light painting that hopefully would only light up uh, the labyrinth. So this will be the first run and see how this picture's turned out. <laughs> this is so cool. I can't see anything. Let me go check the other camera over here and uh, make sure everything is working just fine. All right, going back to the other camera, I changed the settings because it was way too dark. Uh, I didn't change the ISO or the aperture, so it was way too dark. And the other camera, I'm not sure what's happening. We seem to be having a, a bit of a difficult time communicating. We're too far apart and too many things going on. The best way is to keep it simple. I can't see where I'm going. Okay, definitely I got too many cameras going on and communication is difficult when you got so much noise and you're uh, so far apart. And the tide is coming in. I don't know how much more time we're gonna have, but I'm hoping I can get at least one good picture. All right, so I'm gonna switch gears here real quick and come back to the studio and show you what happened that night. So there was a lot going on, like I said in the video. Uh, keeping it simple is probably the best way to get better results. These are photographs that are very difficult to capture, not only because of the conditions and the lighting and all that, but also getting the team together, drawing a labyrinth with the right conditions, with the right tide. These are things that are very hard to put together. Uh, that's why I had so many cameras and I was trying to do so many things to, because again, opportunities like this don't happen often. 
Uh, but this is one of the shots that I, I like. It's not perfect, but I really do like it. This is from the camera that was at the base. My idea with the modified flashlight was to be able to see just the light on the labyrinth. But even with something like that, you can still see the shoes and you can see the, the steps. So I have an idea for this photo. I'm not sh quite sure how I'm gonna get there yet. I love this perspective, being able to have the labyrinth from the bottom and see the lights. To me, that's very unique. This is from above a different perspective. I was in this point over here where it's completely dark and I had somebody else here running this camera. And the idea with this shot was to do a time lapse. I think I mentioned it in the video, just take multiple shots broken up like five second exposures just back to back until they, were, uh, until they were finished walking the labyrinth. But as you can see, you can see the breaks every five seconds, there's a break <laughs> and that didn't work out. And then the wind moved the camera and they don't line up. All these images don't line up. So I, I try to stack them and then, you know, to put a cherry on top, uh, there was other people walking on the beach that left these lights and streaks and stuff here. But the image was way too dark to begin with. This was not a night that things worked out. <laughs> and that's that just makes the other images that do work out so much more valuable because we spent hours, uh, two hours drawing and then two more hours taking pictures. And I got one picture that I'm very happy with. And I'll get to that one in a second. This was another one from that perspective with the dim flashlight. And you can see the texture and the, and the labyrinth looks pretty good. You can see the sand, you can see everything. But the image is not good because I had to recover it. You can see these line of red here and green, and it just doesn't have texture because it was way underexposed. I was expecting the lights from the houses to shine up on the clouds and come down, but the clouds blew away. And I'm assuming most of those houses are rentals because nobody had lights on. <laughs> And these are things you can't really anticipate. And again, you know, you, you're working against the tide. You can see the tide coming up here. So we did, this was the first walk and you can see the, the tide almost reaching the labyrinth. We didn't have a lot of time. We did three walks, the best we could do. And this, to me, is one of the best shots. You could see the texture in the labyrinth. You could see the edging. You could, it just looks incredible. Uh, this was the last walk that day. You could see the waves almost touching the labyrinth. Uh, everything was coming up very fast, but this to me is one of the better ones. This really makes me appreciate the previous uh, photo shoot we did here at night with circles in the sand. To me, that was probably one of the best shots of this style that we ever did, the light painting at night with the labyrinth. The lights from the city were just reflecting enough on the fog and the clouds that it just lit up the, the scene perfectly. The fact that I was only to get one shot that I'm very happy with in those four hours tells you how difficult going out at night and try to anticipate the conditions. It, you just can't plan for it all. I don't want to say I'm upset, but I'm, I'm just not thrilled that I had the team out there for hours and I was only able to get one or two pictures. <laughs> I wanted to get more. I wanted to get different perspectives and, you know, it's kind of disappointing, but you know, what are you going to do? We, we're working against the tide, lighting. You can see here that the rock is a little bit brighter. That's people in the parking lot shining the lights, the headlights of the cars. In this case, it looks good, but in other images, it kind of ruined them. Uh, it, it just, you know, again, just because we plan and we think we have everything the way it's supposed to be, that doesn't mean it's gonna happen that way. I wanted to make this video as a reminder to try not to be as critical with yourself when you're uh, as a photographer. When we learn, every little thing we capture is just like, wow. The first time I went out to take pictures at night and you could see two or three stars, you're like, oh, there's some stars, look at that, it looks awesome. And then you go out again and you see partial Milky Way and you're like, oh, this is, wow, that, that's incredible. And then you go out one more time and now you have a flashlight, you, you paint some trees, you, you try to get more of a foreground and the stars and everything just looks better and better. Then you do that a few times and you're like, well, that planet right there is not as bright as it should be or this star needs to move that we become way too critical of our work. And you know, just because we want things a certain way, that doesn't mean it's always going to happen. This is a reminder to try to make the best you can with what you have. I had an opportunity, to me, this photo looks incredible. I did the best I could with the settings I had, we try to anticipate the conditions and that's all we can do. So again, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.